Hi, welcome. Uh, thanks for continuing to listen to me go on about math. Uh, this is going to be EOC review number five, part two, exponential and logarithmic functions. I don't have a lot of practice on these. So if you need more practice, certainly reach out to your teacher or even message me and I can probably dig up some more stuff for you if you need it. Um, here are the standards we're going to be covering. As always, I have a link of the handout in the video. Primarily, we want to make sure that we can um, set up an exponential growth and decay problem and solve. We're going to solve using logarithms or graphs. So I'll, I'll kind of show you how to input all those. And I'm going to also show you on the TI-84 how to get a log base too, because I don't think I've done that yet. Also going to show you how to convert from a yearly to a monthly rate. Um, just remember R stands for rate, and that's always going to be as a decimal. So if you have, you know, 3%, remember that's going to be 0 0.03, uh, 0.03 as a decimal. If you have 30%, that would be 0.3. So a lot of common mistakes on those. Make sure you're you're careful with your percent. P is your initial or principal. A is your final amount. Let's get into some of these questions. I don't think I have three or four of them, so not a whole lot. Uh, first one, we're just going to show how to solve these using logarithms. I'm going to show you on... Um, by hand. So on this question right here, we have two parentheses, three to the negative four X minus five equals 30. Anytime you're solving an exponential equation, you wanna make sure if you don't have any number being added. So in this case here, you have two, three, negative four X minus five. You don't have a number here. So we don't have to worry about that, but that's what we would get rid of first if that were the case. So since I don't have that, I'm gonna divide both sides by two. And I'm going to give uh, 3 to the negative 4x minus 5 equals 30 divided by 2, which is 15. Now, going from there, you have to write it in a log form. So the log form, the way the log form works is if you have uh, some base to uh, a value, um, to call it y equals some amount, then the way that that works is you say log base b. So the same base of your exponent, the amount goes in the log and the exponent gets isolated to the right side, okay? So if you look over here, this whole thing, that's your exponent, okay? This, this is your exponent. So when I'm rewriting this, I'm gonna write log base three. I'm gonna put the, the, the number here inside the log, 15. And I'm going to set that equal to my exponent, negative 4x minus 5. All right, after that, I'm going to have to evaluate log base 3 of 15. Let me show you two ways to do it. Step one is going to be using the TI-84. If you have a TI-84, you can pull that out. All right, with the TI-84, you can go into your math menu and go to up a few times or go down a bunch of times and go to log base. And put the 3 down here in the base and the 15. And that'll get you that value. Let's say your teacher doesn't allow that, or you have an older model, or a calculator that doesn't have the log base. That's okay. You can do the log button here, but it doesn't have a change of base. So you'll have to do the 15 inside the parentheses, and then you'll have to divide by another log with a different base, and that base being the 3 down there. So either way, we'll get you the answer 2.465, uh, we'll say. In Desmos, since you all have access to Desmos, this would be the way to do it if you don't have a calculator at home. You would type in LOG, hit the shift minus, that underscore, three, and then go to 15 in the parentheses. Um, you can get that log function uh, using the functions down here if, you, if you're so inclined, if you go down here and go to functions. And it should be way down here, I think. Remember now. Um, okay, there, yeah, log base A. So if I go here um, and press log, then I can do it that way too. But I find that to be uh, kind of cumbersome. So just learn the, the keyboard shortcut on that, 2.465. All right, so from there, we're going to go ahead and solve that out. So 2.465 is equal to negative 4x minus 5. Uh, I think from there, it's a linear equation. Just be careful with your decimals. Um, we're going to add 5 to both sides and then divide by negative 4. So 2 plus 5 is 7. So it's going to be 7.465. And 
and I do not know what 7.465 divided by negative 4 is. I know it's going to be negative. So throw that into your calculator and get your answer and round a couple decimal places. And so my answer should be negative 1.86625. I'll just round it to negative 1.866. And I don't think there's any more to that equation. Uh, so x is equal to negative 1.866. I should remind you that, of course, you can use a graph intersection on this. Um, I've gone through a couple before. So if you've already know how to do it and you can get that, move on to the next question. Here's your work. But stick around if you want to see it again. You'll have to key it in with parentheses around your exponent if you want to be able to uh, manually do that. So you're going to have to scroll up. Make sure you do y equals the number. And find that point of intersection, and there is your answer. Negative 1.866 matches up what we solved with using uh, the non-graph method. All right, uh, go to number two. All right, part two, number two. Suppose $5,000 is invested into an account earning 6% annual interest. If no additional money was added to the account, approximately how long would it take for the money in the account to double in value? So this looks like an exponential growth because it's earning, so it's going to be growth. And the, the basic exponential growth model is going to be our final amount is equal to our initial amount times 1 plus your rate, your rate should be a decimal, to some t power. So we want to know how long. In other words, we want to know what t is equal to. So we don't know our variable, but we do know that r is going to be 6%. So 6% as a decimal is 0 0.06. I know my initial amount is 5,000. So I know that that's my A, because that's what, or excuse me, that's my P, that's what I'm investing. And I want to know how long is it going to take for the amount to double in value? So double is two times. So two times 5,000 is going to give you 10,000. So I actually know my, uh, my final amount as well. So I can actually solve this. I have 5,000, or excuse me, 10,000 equals 5,000 parentheses, 1 plus 0 0.06, always use your decimal for your rate, to the t power. And if I'm solving this by hand, I'm going to use logarithms again. So I'm going to divide both sides by 5,000, and that's going to give me 2, 000, or, uh, uh, two on the left side. So 5,000. And that's 2. Now, I'm going to combine the 1 and the 0 0.06. So 2 equals 1 plus... 0 0.06. Let's just add a 1.06 to the t power. And now my base is 1.06. So when I'm writing this as a log, remember I want to do log of the correct base, and that's your base. So make sure that you put the 1.06 down there, not the 2. The 2 is the amount that's going to go in here, and that's going to equal your exponent, t. And from there, it is calculator work. So whether you have your TI-84 or uh, your Desmos, so I'll go ahead and just do it in the 84. Um, you can either do math, go to log base if you have that option. And you get about 11.89. Or if you don't have that option, just do log of 2 divided by a log of 1.06. And I'll just round that to 11.9 years. So how long would it take the money in the account to double in value? About 11.9 years. Hold on a second. I lost that work, but you can scroll back if you missed it. Um, so I said the answer was about 11.9 years. You can also check with your graph. Um, 5,000 parentheses, 1.06. Just make sure you call your variable x and you do y equals 10,000. And we're going to have to scroll way out on this one, like very much out, and find where the 10,000 is. So get back in there. And just be careful. Don't want to click the y-axis. Click where they cross each other, and that's going to be 11.896. So we said about 11.9 years. All right, one more question on this, I think. Yep, so question number three, this is a short one. The function a parentheses 1.20 to the t power models the value of an investment 
after t years with a 20% yearly interest rate. Based on the function, what is the approximate monthly interest rate in percentages? Uh, this question seems like it's uh, missing information, but you don't need the starting amount to be able to answer this question. Um, what you do is anytime that you want to convert a year, this is a yearly rate, first think about this whole base here. Your, your yearly rate is 20%. Even if I did not give you the 1.20, you would just take that, uh, that one and add 0.2 to get your base, right? So I have some starting amount, which I don't know. And T is in years. And, you know, my final amount in this case is just Y or whatever you want it to be. Um, but one plus 0.2 is 1.2. So that's where the, the function comes from. Now, as far as getting a monthly rate, you know there are 12 months in one year. All right, so 12 months um, in one year. So one year, uh, or, or if I take my year and I divide by 12, I can get that into monthly rates. But I don't want to take the base and divide by 12. I want to raise it to the 112 power. So the way that this is going to work is you're going to have this y equals a um, 1.20 to the 112. And I'm going to change that T to, to M, okay? So 1 12th is going to be my new exponent. Now, when I go over here and I put that into the calculator, I'm going to get the following. One point zero one five three. So if I'm rewriting this as a monthly problem, um, it's going to look like this. Um, y equals my starting amount, which I don't know. I don't really care. 1.0153 raised to the M. M stands for months. That's the same thing as 1.2 to the T power. Um, so the question says, what is the monthly interest rate? So when I'm talking about the rate, Remember, this is going to be 1 plus R. So if I look at that equation, 1 plus R is supposed to equal 1.0153. I can, I can get that 1 subtracted out of there, and I can get the rate by itself. 1 minus 1 is 0. So I'm going to get a rate as a decimal of 0 0.0153. The question wants to know as a percent. So if my rate is... 0 0.0153, my rate as a percent is just going to make that uh, decimal move two places over or times it by a 100. All right, times by 100. And that's going to give you 1.53%. So just a little bit of math on there. Um, if you do uh, 20 divided by 12 is going to give you a different number. And, uh, you know, when I first actually learned these problems, that's what I actually thought you had to do. Um, so you do not want to do 20 divided by 12 um, as you're off a little bit. It's actually 1.53%, 1.66%. And you might think that's not a lot of difference there. It is when you add it up over time. So make sure that you are very uh, careful when you do that and raise it to the 1 12th power. I'm going to write that down because that's really important. 1 12th is your exponent. So 1.20 to the 1 12th power. And that's going to equal that number there. All right, that concludes EOC review number five, part two, exponential and logarithmic functions. Not a lot of problems on this one. So if you need more practice, please feel free to reach out and I'll try to find something for you if I can. Have a great, great day.